Back in the cage, Mr. Crosby ready to get this one underway. Mustafa Radi, black shorts, red corner. I'll present Jonathan Carlos, also in the black, but the blue corner here tonight. Rocking the man bun. I like it very much. Obviously comes with plus 10 power behind those punches <laughs> as they touch him up. Here we go. Pressure already from Raddy, trying to use the full length as they just started a second too early. The cage door not completely locked, but stranger things have happened in <laughs> MMA, Phil. Here we go. Claps him back in. And what Raddy needs to do is get right in the face of Ooh. Carlos, right from the get-go. Oh, another stop straight away. What an interesting with an inside start. leg kick and a low blow. Raddy doesn't look too phased, trying to shake it off right now, but yeah, definitely a bit of a weird adrenaline yeah. going to be coming into this one. They touch him up straight back in, maybe for the third time, we'll see. Like I was saying, Raddy really needs to get into the face Ooh. of his opponent. He can't allow him that space with which to work. This is beautiful. Beating his, his opponent into planting down on the feet, changes levels, gets the takedown, now finds himself in such an advantageous position. And not just the timing on the level change, but the drive once he had hold of the legs. Watch out for a triangle here, potential setup, but great job to adjust by Raddy here to compress his opponent against the cage. Yeah, good job using that fence, working the body right now, making it really hard for Carlos to control the posture, keeping him off his back, but active off the back. We mentioned Again, his credentials as a jiu-jitsu guy and getting good control on that right uh, left arm. Nice job by Raddy to be aware of that, and every time he feels that, feels that he keeps his posture nice mm. and compact. Very, very smart. What he needs to do is be careful about these winging punches. Watch the bicep control here from Carlos. Yeah, you can tell he's a jiu-jitsu veteran just trying multiple ways to sneak and set up that triangle. Definitely seems to like to go to it. Of course, in MMA, sometimes, you know, there's, there's guys like Michael Bisping that will yeah. tell you, try a few submissions, but it worked to your feet. Just as we say that. Look at the way he, he used the wizard. That was absolutely beautiful. Used the wizard to clamp down, planted his hand down to get back up, yep. and now finds himself in the early stages of get-up. Yeah, building off the base right there, right knee to the mat, trying to work now, even trying to scoop back that right leg. Very conscious of the back take as well as Raddy mm. tries to use the body lock to rotate round to that far side and he's keeping his back now to the fence again. Speaks to the high level experience of Carlos yeah. knowing that this is a dangerous position. If I want to get back to my feet, I've got a plan and use it wisely. When you're competing against somebody who is as dangerous and as dynamic as Carlos is on the ground, your jiu-jitsu, my old jiu-jitsu coach Johnny Burroughs used to say, your approach needs to be like death metal. The tempo needs to be low and slow and heavy. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now from Raddy. Like death metal. Okay, I like that. That's an interesting <laughs> analogy. Raddy definitely try pulling up, framing up, giving him some extra space to leverage some power into those punches, but also trying to find a way to crush past the guard. Almost sneaks through to half guard right there, but Carlos is creating a lot of space here, which is going to give him a ton of options as long as he's got that space. And he's doing enough to keep himself honest here. He's not just holding on to the position. He's landing enough shots to prevent the referee from standing them up. It's fantastic fight IQ so far from Raddy. Good wrist control now with the right hand. And look Let's at that head it. position. Just right underneath the chin, making things uncomfortable. Because invariably, as we know in MMA, where the head goes, the body follows. Of course, yeah. It really does do a good job of, of locking down your opponent's hips as well. When you can get your upper body that far on top of their upper body. And a good way to tell that is with the head position. Great shrimping there, right, though. As he pushes off and looking to return to full guard. Again, still trying to gain wrist control on that left arm. Perhaps to stop him from maintaining this half guard yep. position right here, Phil. Constant methodical pressure from Raddy. And even when he has allowed his opponent, when he has allowed Carlos to move, he's kept him pinned against the cage, which prevents him from extending, from getting the hips involved. It's so smart. We've spent a lot of time here now in this fight, about two minutes in this position, about a minute and a half left on the clock for this round. Yep. Carlos, again, been real careful about this, you know, didn't want to go to the knees and give up the back. Has done a good job squaring the hips against the fence when Raddy is threatening that position. And we talk about Carlos not getting finished very often. These are the reasons why he's safe and methodical in his approach. And he knows two more rounds after this one. Let's grind it out against the fence here. I'm going to start back on my feet regardless. Yeah. There's not been a lot of hustle, though, yeah, yeah, from yeah. Carlos. What has been interesting, though, it's a fantastic bit of game planning from Raddy. He knows how dynamic his opponent is, that movement of form by Capoeira. He is a fantastic striker. So if you take the wind out of the seals of your opponent by constantly forcing them to try and move to try and get up, you're going to take away a little bit of that dynamism going into the second round. Definitely, and we'll hope to see that. You know, I don't know how much uh, energy Raddy has used. He's definitely done a good job just driving Carlos into the fence with good shoulder pressure and... You know, that's helped him maintain this position as yep. he wraps the legs now, trying to scoop the man off the fence and find an angle to maybe pass and get to a better position. But it's a little tough 
for Raddy to do much here against Carlos, who again isn't really offering him any good positions because he's being so methodical in his approach and defense. And there's great work from Raddy once again. Just any time he feels that a little bit of movement from Carlos, he readjusts, gets that head onto the chin and controls the movement. I'd like to see him land, be a little bit more active just with the shots. Yeah. Carlos got a left underhook right now here as well. Ten second clapper goes off. See if they break and throw a few strikes before the end of the round. Definitely don't throw a knee here, Raddy, if you're thinking about that one. Back to the feet is Carlos for the closeout of this round. But you've got to give that one to Raddy there, just based on the control. Yeah, fantastic control implemented. And again, it's fantastic game planning, fantastic fight IQ. He's acutely aware of just how dangerous his opponent is if he gives him those little pockets of space to work. Therefore, he's taking that away. And in doing so, taking away the most dangerous element of Jonathan Carlos's fighting game. Yeah, fantastic corners for both men as well, giving some step-by-step -step instructions. Shemra yep. showing some ground and pound motion here for his man Raddy, who, like you said, wasn't able to get off a ton of damage yep. with that top position. See if the same strategy comes out because he level changed quite early into that first round. Yeah, you can see, I think Shemrock is very much of the same mind as us. Yes, you're winning the fight, but to put a little bit more of an exclamation mark on it, maybe land a little bit more ground and pound. But what we need to see from Carlos going into the second round is constant lateral movement. As yes. soon as he feels his back against the cage, he needs to move into the open forum, the center yep. of the cage. Yeah, we've seen, obviously, Raddy very dominant in that position. Carlos, even with that jiu-jitsu black belt, that credentials, has shown he's had the trouble, especially against the cage. And like you said, if that takedown happens in the open, in the mat, maybe would have seen it play out differently on the feet. He definitely had trouble controlling position with his back and head squished up against that fence as we lock in the cage for the second round here. Still nice and light on the feet. <laughs> There's that blitz we were talking about. And did you see how you switch stance to cover distance oh, there? Oh, yeah. Start Beautiful. with the rear right uppercut. You don't see many combinations start that way. But once again, back is to defense. Raddy has shot this takedown, trying to strip that back left leg and also rotate round possibly to the back. Watch out for that Dagestani handcuff. Yeah, if he can lock up that left arm of Ra uh, Carlos, that will not be good. Mate potentially be working for a very slow methodical back tick here yeah and Collins has done such a good job of keeping that butt to the fence you know that that is what you want to do to just not give your opponent any space mm. again not much hustle here from Carlos as one hook is trying to fire over the top at least to stretch out that right leg and that will make it really hard to get up if he does have control of that right leg of Carlos this is fantastic grappling from Raddy and this is new age MMA grappling yeah. this is what the Dagestanis brought in and dominated with it's it's locking up the legs with your legs mm -hmm. it's reaching around to try and control that far side arm to lock in position and just continually making your opponent work and stripping them down Again, great use of the wizard from Carlos to get himself back to a partial stance where he can work to his feet. But right here, he needs to explode, Phil, right? Yep. He needs to make a decision and engage and explode from position because methodically working up hasn't really worked for him so far. And again, potential back take here. And you've got to put this in the context of jiu-jitsu as well. This is a brown belt taking on a well-credentialed black belt. This is going to do amazing things for the confidence of Mustafa Radi. Still trying to find his way back to the feet, giving up the back in the process perhaps here. Left hand to the mat. We just haven't seen him advance from this knee hand position. This is sort of stage two of yeah. get up right here. Wait, he's going to need to make a little bit of a decision oh. here. He's going to need to sacrifice a little bit to try and get up. He's going to need to be explosive because right now he's tried to very much do it in stages. Oh, and that's that explosivity we talked about. Well, it seems better than, you know, that rear naked joke, which was slowly <laughs> locking in position, shrimping in there, trying to beat the get-up position. Good side control work. Did you though. see the way he realized that there was an avenue by which Carlos could get out? Steps yeah. over in a side control and just cuts off the angle. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Feeling the man on bottom, Watch understanding for where he's going. Rotate back around to the back. Let's he's a little bit high. The left arm there blocking that left hook. Good job by Carlos. That's the super awareness of his game. And finally going to get back to the feet and fire a knee as they stand up. But this is so much better for Jonathan Carlos. Occupies the center. Raddy looking a little slow. I'm sure the gas tank is still good. Buying some time before that next takedown. Those big head kicks like that without any setup as well. That's a little risky for Carlos, especially because he's been taken down twice now. Got to find a home for the hands. At least start the combinations there. Inside leg kick from Southpaw. I like that. Oh, big right hand over the top, but doesn't land. Watch out for Raddy to use the fundamental striking, the jab to straight to set up Ooh. the takedown. 
thought about it there, but he's pressuring. He's doing yeah. the right thing. He's pressuring Carlos against the cage and to try and set up that take on. Just good work with that jab to get his man moving the way he wanted to. Start, steps his way in there with a left jab and then try to wing the overhand. There's a nice slip. Yeah. Tries to fire back with the left, but not able to. But that'll keep Raddy honest with these jabs. He's going to have to think twice. Outside leg kick lands right there as well for Carlos. Raddy seems like he's just kind of biding his time to put the pressure on and work for the takedown. Ooh. Not far away with the uppercut. Man, it, it feels like both guys are just kind of slinging Ooh. it out. Wheel kick out of range from Carlos right there. I feel like that's the main thing right now, Phil. Both guys are having trouble finding their range yeah. of the striking. Uh, it, oh, just as we say that, Raddy oh, lands nice. a big shot. Big shot over the top from Carlos. Yeah, Carlos tried to bait him in there by kind of start stepping and relying on his head movement. Did get tagged, but he was able to land his own shot because of it. Now circling into that right hand, which he's probably going to look to slip to the outside of and bang back with his own left if he stays southpaw. But again, every time he rotates laterally, he seems to switch stance. Does Carlos? It's giving Raddy some problems now. He's southpaw. Oh, that's beautiful work on the back foot from Raddy. Just clips a little shot, but he's doing such a good job of not being baited into standing and throwing shots. He's happy to let Carlos occupy that space in between the two. Yeah, neither guy. Oh, Ooh, left hook a there. shot. And that finally, that blitz works as Raddy just backed up. Left hook, wrapped the chin, right hand was down. And now you see a little bit of confidence from mm. Carlos. You see him moving a little faster. That's a lovely straight left. I don't know if it landed on the chin, but that was accurate. Off the slip. And, you know, you don't see this much, but he does like to circle to yeah. his left when Southport, very Vitor Belfort-like, mm. he would circle left to slip easier to the outside of the right hand and come back with his own left. Well, what it does, it constantly keeps your opponent guessing. It constantly keeps your opponent wondering which way they need yes. to, slip and slide, to slip and slide and sidestep. More leg kicks into a level change right there. I, I really like this work from Carlos in this round when it got back to the feet. Now the foot stomps. Ouchie. When it got back to the feet in that round there, Phil, I have to feel Carlos was starting to figure out Raddy. Starting to find, okay, what setups work, yeah. what doesn't, where am I moving? And the constant start switching, I think you're right. I think it was giving him problems. What has been so entertaining is watching Jonathan Carlos realize what adaptations he needs to make in the fight that's indicative of his high fight iq for me he's been able to make those reads download the data and change his game so far raddy has pretty much stuck to what was successful in the first round it's really now incumbent upon him and his corner to now make those changes going into the third round yeah and you know he's got a great corner in there you got yeah. shep rock on one knee giving him as much advice as possible Trying to just maybe find a game plan that's going to work. Perhaps they'll call for that takedown again yeah. coming out for the third round because the first was so dominant, especially because I think Carlos has started to find his timing on the feet. What I would like to see Raddy doing is not just using the jab to try and set up the takedown because that, that, that's quite easily readable. One, two, use that fundamental striking to close the distance, pressure your opponent against the cage, and then work for the takedown. Well, one round to decide it all here. Cage Legacy 22 coming at you live from the Dome in Liverpool. Thank you for joining us here tonight alongside with us now. A very packed house inside the Dome, filled up and ready for action. Three more fights still to come after this one as these two touch gloves for the third and final round. Conceivably, I don't think we're, we're outside the realms of possibility to say we're looking at a round apiece here. I think you're right there, Phil. I think the striking from Carlos towards the end of the second maybe stole that round and now he's coming out looking confident. Ooh. Very hard to read, like stutter step, and then I'm yeah. going to chop a leg kick. It's Well, that's what we were saying. He does this so brilliantly, and it prevents his opponent from getting into their own rhythm. Still looking for his mark. Lots of fakes. Oh! Hey. Rear left uppercut head kick. That is a strange combo. You've not seen that since um, uh, Rakic knocked out Jimmy Manoa. You know, that's, a little, that's a good shout right there. I like that, <laughs> but here we go. Carlos blitzing again. Going live, finishing up top. Raddy, Raddy doing some good job behind that jab, but again, I'd like to see him follow that up with a straight. Straight. I love the combinations. Carlos starts with the hands, ends with the kicks every time, whereas Raddy, ooh, that's a nice combo from Raddy. I was going to say, he's really just operating off that jab, yeah. off that straight. He's not throwing the kind of fight-ending shots or damaging shots that Carlos is trying to put on his man here. And I think in the judge's eyes, you know, that that's what's going to score the points. It shows that you're trying to finish the fight, and, you know, Damage, effective striking is what we're looking for. Getting in on the takedown, but was a little bit blind, oh, but nice. beautiful work, almost disdainfully shrugs Raddy yeah. off. And it is more of a psychological game as we move into this third round, and confidence is king. Carlos circling, circling, he's going to stop, plant, come forward with that blitz. It's just a question of what stance and when he's going to do it. 
What are you, if you're ratty here and you're seeing this lateral movement, what kind of a shot are you picking out, Phil? You're going to have to, instead of implementing just just back and forth Muay Thai movement, he's going to have to almost approach it like a slalom skier and cut the angles off, almost like you're running away from a crocodile in diagonals, you know what I mean? Yes. I didn't know you should do that. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Raddy's still looking focused. Oh, oh he got clipped. Straight left, left shot. shot. And it was the right hand over the top at the end of the three-piece combination that rocked Raddy slightly there. Got a reaction from the crowd. No sort of aggressiveness from Carlos, though. You can tell why some of these fights may have gone to decision. Yeah. He's very much a sniper. He either snipes you out or he doesn't. But he landed that right hand and Raddy immediately called him on. Well, he's also acutely aware that if he rushes in in a straight line, He's leaving himself prime for the takedown. So he's doing a great job of once he lands his shot, getting outside of the pocket, cutting the angles, and essentially playing a little bit of Matador here. Front kicks now coming out of the pocket for Carlos. Throwing them from his arsenal. And Raddy still kind of the same thing from Raddy. As yeah. you said, he's just following him. He's trying to lead with his jab so he can throw something else. But because he's not finding a home for the jab, there's no other offense coming out from Phil. Well, Roddy, not Phil, you're Phil. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Little exchange right there, another looping right hand over the top from Carlos. Not landing super cleanly. Started this one with a left high kick. Didn't connect to the chin, though. Two minutes to go, and for me, right now, Carlos is winning this fight. Therefore, all the impetus really lies with Roddy to do something, to get really change the momentum. He's trying to fight off the back foot right here. And that's what I want to see from Rally. You know, if you ask me, timing those leg kicks. Yeah. Being the man to intercept Carlos as he's stepping forward with those combinations. Now, granted, he has been caught doing that. But if he's going to go second every time and you're throwing one or two punches and your opponent is throwing four and combos, it's going to be hard to come out on top of the judges' scorecards. It almost feels like Carlos now has Rally second guessing. Oh. Second guessing his shot selection. He's not quite sure when to pull the trigger. Yeah. And I love the way he's starting these combos with uppercuts. Mm. Closing the distance that close, because if you're that close with the first punch, you can finish with whatever you want, pretty much. Nice, diverse striking game from Carlos. Lots of stance switching, 19 fight veteran. Ooh. Trying to throw another overhand right over the top. Put his man away, make it definitive. Final minute of the, and now it's Carlos trying to get in on the takedown. I mean, as soon as he heard a minute on the clock, maybe he decided to shoot that takedown, because that's a veteran move from Carlos right there. He's just doing enough with little, almost soccer kicks, side kicks to the calf. Roddy trying to get the elbows through. But with 30 seconds left in the round, you get the feeling that Carlos is going to be happy to stay in this position, land these little shots on route to another decision. Yeah, you, you would think, you know, maybe a takedown would be a bit more definitive. Mm. You know, I, I think that would be something he should try and continue to work for. Ruddy just not really even trying to pummel with that left arm, just punching his man in the face. Maybe just trying to score points for the judges right here. It really depends on how they see this round. And Phil, this has been perhaps our closest fight tonight that's going to go to the judges' scorecards. Very much on a knife edge. I believe round one conclusively was Ruddy's round two belonged to Carlos. Round three from my money belonged to Jonathan Carlos. For the 16th time in his professional career, he goes to the judges.